Good morning, um, Brother Joe, and welcome to Morning Prayer on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood in Chicago, Illinois. This Monday in the 13th week after Pentecost, we're also commemorate, have the commemoration of Augustine of Hippo today. Um, for now, we just ask uh, participants to mute their uh, microphones. It's up to you whether or not you want to mute your video. Um, while we're gathering ourselves in prayer, it's our custom to light a candle to signify God's presence, and I'm going to do that now. Um, we follow the uh, structure of the Brother uh, Brotherhood of St. Gregory Daily Office app, and you can get to there either on your smartphone or your tablet or your computer by just putting dailyoffice.app in the URL line. Um, if you are using the app, there's some important, a couple important settings that you'll want to set for that if you're new to us. Um, is you click on the upper right hand corner, there's three lines, you click or touch on there, it will take you to the settings. You'll want to set the Lord's Prayer to traditional language and you'll want to set the Psalms to the 30 day Psalm cycle. Um, if you are using a prayer book at home, I'm going to give you um, some page numbers now and some page numbers along the way. Morning prayer um, will begin on page 80 of the prayer book, followed by the Vanity on page 82. We have four Psalms today, Psalm uh, 132, 133, 134, and 135, starting on page 795, 785 of the prayer book. Canticles today will be Canticle 9 and 19. Canticle 9 is on page 86 of the prayer book, and Canticle 19 is on page 94. We'll to, we're going to do the general thanksgiving at the end. That's on page 101 of the prayer book. That's also a setting in the Daily Office app. You can turn on the, you can turn on the, um, the general thanksgiving at the end. So it's an important day in the church today, um, commemorating of Augustine of Hippo, and I'm going to read the hagiography now for, for him. Augustine, perhaps the most influ influential theologian in the history of Western Christianity, was born in 354 at, I don't know how to say it, Tagaste in North Africa. In his relentless search for truth, he was attracted to Menin. Man, man, I should have looked these up. Manich, Manichism and Neoplatonism, Neoplat and was con constantly engaged in an in inner struggle against sin. Finally, under the influence of his mother Monica, Augustine surrendered to the Christian faith in the late summer of 386. He was baptized by Ambrose, Bishop of Milan, on Easter Eve in 387. After returning to North Africa in 391, Augustine found himself chosen by the people of Hippo to be a priest. Four years later, he was chosen bishop of that city. His spiritual autobiography, The Confessions, written shortly before 400 in the form of an extended prayer, is a classic of Western spirituality. He famously wrote, You have made for us yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Augustine wrote countless treatises, letters, and sermons. They have provided a rich source of new and fresh insights into Christian truth and became foundational of later Christian theology as it developed in the Western church. Much of Augustine's theology developed in dialogue with those he disagreed with and his training in rhetoric is on full display. The man at Chans had attempted to solve the problem of evil by posting at the existence of an independent agent eternally opposed to God. In refutation, Augustine affirmed that all creation is essentially good, having been created by God, and that evil is, properly speaking, the privation of good. A rigorous sect, the Donatists, had split from the rest of the church after the persecution of Diocletian in the early 4th century. Against them, Augustine asserted that the church was holy, not because its members could be proved holy, 
but because holiness was a property of the church to which all its members are called. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stirred by Alaric, the Visigoth sect of Rome in 410, Augustine wrote his great work, The City of God. In it, he writes, two cities have been formed by two loves, the earthly love of self, even to the contempt of God, and the heavenly by the love of God, even to the contempt of self. The earthly city glories in itself. The heavenly city glories in the Lord. In the one, the princes and the nations it subdues and are ruled by the love of ruling. In the other, the princes and subject, subjects serve one another in love. Augustine died on August 28th, 430, as the Vandals were besieging his own earthly city of Hippo. We'll take a moment here. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Together, let us pray Psalms 132, 133, 134, and 135, starting on page 785 of the prayer book. Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured. How he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house, nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyelids slumber until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark, we heard it was an Ephrata. We found it in the fields of Jerem. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place. You and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell for I delight in her. I will surely bless her provisions and satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation and her faithful people will rejoice and sing. There will I make the horn of David flourish. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame. But as for him, his crown will shine. 
oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard. Upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is lovely. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself and Israel for his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. The Lord does whatever pleases him in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all the deeps. He brings up rain clouds from the ends of the earth. He sends out lightning with the rain and brings the winds out of his storehouse. It is he who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn both of man and beast. He sent signs and wonders in the midst, into the midst of you, O Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his servants. He overthrew many nations and put mighty kings to death. Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan, and all the kings of Canaan. He gave their land to be an inheritance, an inheritance for Israel, his people. O Lord, your name is everlasting. Your renown, O Lord, endures from age to age. For the Lord gives his people justice and shows compassion to his servants. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. Eyes have they, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Neither is there any breath in their mouth. Those who make them are like them. And so are all who put their trust in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. You who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord out of Zion, who dwells in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Adonijah, son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. He prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. His father had never at any time displeased him by asking, why have you done thus and so? He was also a very handsome man and he was born next after Absalom. He conferred with Joab, son of Zeruiah, Zeruiah and with the priest Abathar and they supported, and they supported Adonijah. But the priest Zadok and Benaiah, the son of Jeho Jehoiada, and the prophet Nathan and Sh Shimei and Rei, 
and David's own warriors did not side with Adonijah. Adonijah sacrificed sheep, oxen, fatted cattle by the stone Zoheleth, which is beside En Rogel, and he invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the royal officials, officials of Judah. But he did not invite the prophet, prophet Nathan or Beniah or the warriors or his brother Solomon. Then Nathan said to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, have you not heard that Adonijah, son of Haggith, has become king and our Lord David does not know it? Now, therefore, come, let me give you advice so that you may save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go in at once to King David and say to him, did you not, my Lord, the king, swear to your servant, saying, your son Solomon shall succeed me as king and he shall sit on my throne? Why then is Adonijah king? Then while you are still there speaking with the king, I will come in after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went into the king in his room. The king was very old. Abishag, the Shumanite, was attending the king. Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance to the king, and the king said, What do you wish? She said to him, My lord, you swore to your servant by the Lord your God, saying, Your son Solomon shall su succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne. But now suddenly Adonijah has become king, though you, my lord, the king, do not know it. He has sacrificed oxen, fatted cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the children of the king, the priest Abathar, and Joab, the commander of the army. But your servant Solomon he has not invited. But you, my lord, the king, the eyes of all Israel are on you to tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord, the king, after him. <laughs> Excuse me. Otherwise, it will come to pass when my lord, the king, sleeps with his ancestors, that my son Solomon and I will be counted offenders. While she was still speaking with the king, the prophet Nathan came in, and the king was told, Here is the prophet Nathan. When he came in before the king, he did obeisance to the king with his face to the ground. Nathan said, My lord the king, my lord the king, have you said, Adonijah shall succeed me as king and shall sit on my throne? For today he has gone down and has sacrificed oxen, fatted cattle, and sheep in abundance, and has invited all the king's children, Joab, the commander of the army, and the priest Abathar, who are now eating and drinking before him, saying, Long, long live King Adonijah. But he did not invite me, your servant, and the priest Zadok, and Benaiah, son of Jeho Je Jehoiada, and your servant Solomon. Has this thing been brought about my lord by my lord the king and have you not let your servants know who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him king david answered summon bathsheba to me so she came into the king's presence and stood before the king the king swore saying as the lord lives who has saved my life from every adversity as i swore to you by the lord the god of israel your son Solomon shall succeed me as king, and he shall sit on my throne in my place. So I will do this day. So I will do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground and did obeisance to the king and said, May my lord King David live forever. Here ends the reading. Together, let us pray Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah, found on page 86 of the prayer book. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began to defend himself. I consider myself fortunate, that is, before you, King Agrippa, I am to make my defense today against all the accusations that my own people have brought against me, because you are especially familiar with our religious customs and the beliefs <coughs> that divide us. Therefore, I beg of you to listen to me patiently. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth, a life spent from the beginning among my own people and in Jerusalem. They have known for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that I have belonged to the strictest sect of our religion and lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial on account of my hope in the promise made by God to our ancestors, a promise that our 12 tribes hope to attain as they earnestly worship day and night. It is for this hope, Your Excellency, that the Jewish leaders have brought charges against me. Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to, to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did in Jerusalem with authority received from the chief priests. I did not only I I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. By punishing them among them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme, and since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests, when at midday along the road, Your Excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun shining all shining around me and my companions. When we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, Who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to, do, to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the just Gentiles, to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. After that, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, that throughout the countryside of Judea and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with repentance. That is why some men seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day, I have had help from God. And so I stand here testifying both small and great, saying nothing what the prophets and Moses said would take place, that the Messiah must suffer and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. Here ends the reading. Together, let us pray Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed, found on page 94 of the prayer book. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together, let us say the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96 of the prayer book, followed by the Lord's Prayer. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Together, let us pray suffrages A found on page 97 of the prayer book. <clears throat> Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord God, the light of the minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the hearts that serve you, help us, following the example of your servant, Augustine of Hippo, so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may fully serve you, whose service is perfect freedom through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Next are the prayers for the Episcopal Church of the Atonement um, in Chicago and beyond for the week of August 27th. You can add your own intentions either silently or aloud at home, or you can add them to the comments feed of this Google Meet, and hopefully I will see them. There's a bubble on the lower right-hand corner. If you click on that, you can add them. You can add the text there. We pray for the healing and comfort of those for whom we now offer our prayers. We pray for the sick, Phyllis, Graham, Mark, Eli, Destiny, Kay, Ron B, Jerry C, Brad, Mary, Killian, Rita, Dennis, Mary, Tom R, Ed, Thomas a Priest, Susan T, former President Carter, Ken a Deacon, Mary, Barbara, Richard, Michael, who's the presiding bishop, John, Manny, Chris, Nancy, Jeff, Connie, Michael N, Carlos, Veril, Roman, Rodney, a bishop, Mary Kay, Kevin, Leslie, James, who's a priest, Jackie, John C, Jose, Patricia, Roy, Bernard, Ronaldo, and all with COVID-19. We pray for those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth, for all who mourn, especially Duda, Allison, Lee, and Rich, for peace of mind for Shane, priest and priest, and Tracy, whose mother Christine is missing after Hurricane Hillary, the people of Hawaii as they recover from devastating fires on the island of Maui, 
for the unemployed and for those seeking work, for peace, especially in Ukraine, Sudan, Ethiopia, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, Syria, Yemen, Myanmar, and Niger, and for the work of Care for Friends and Care for Real. For Sina's nephew, John struggling with alcohol dependency and depression and suicidal thoughts. We pray, pray for all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Kari, Anthony, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents and for all prisoners, especially Oscar Roy, Jorge, and Mingo. We pray for members of our military services on active duty. For Andre, Ricky, Owen, Max, Celeste, and Nate. We pray for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Dave and Amanda, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry. We give thanksgiving for the great work of Rufus Gonzalez and his crew for a successful block party this past Saturday on the 26th. Thanksgiving this week for the birthdays of Ian Oden, Don Fisher, Charlene Reynolds, Felix Kim, Nancy Klein, Ricardo Velota, Na Jane Lucas, PJ Pruitt, Andrew Ramos, William Pryor. And the uh, anniversaries of Jim Dirts and Amanda Patrick, and Catherine Kane and Daniel Lair. We pray for the departed. For the three people killed in the racially motivated attack in Florida, David Tribble, Bob Barker, Marty Licardo, John Warnock, all victims of gun violence, all who have died of COVID-19. And at the anniversaries of their deaths of Nicholas Protos, Don Rice, Beverly Villadores, Esther Brown, Esperanza, Esperanza Perez, Marjorie Wood, Melvin Eugene Mather, Roy Waywell, a priest, Marge Capetta, Chester Larson, Mary Martin, Stephen Luther Carter, and Ralph Key. And we have a prayer for Ukraine. Lord of all the earth, be present with the people of Ukraine at this time of danger, fear, and conflict. Grant that wise and peaceable counsels may yet prevail and give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May these and all our intercessions be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Together, let us pray the general thanksgiving on page 101 of the prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This concludes morning prayer with the Episcopal Church of the Atonement. You can join us every morning here at 8.30 a.m. on Google Meet. Um, to Daily Mass at Atonement in person. Weekly, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 a.m. Tuesday at noon. Wednesday, there's an additional 6.30 p.m. Mass. There's a healing mass on Saturday at 10 a.m. Sunday masses are at 8 a.m., 9 a.m. There's a solemn high mass at 11 a.m. Um, and that's broadcast on YouTube. Um, things that are coming up, the first even song of the St. Cecilia Choir season will be on Wednesday, October 4th. So mark your calendars for that. Everybody, thank you for being here. Have a great week. Be kind and be safe.